Rebekah was the wife of Isaac and mother of Esau and Jacob. We're first introduced to Rebekah in Genesis 24, 15, where she's identified as the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. This would have made Rebekah a great niece to Abraham and second cousin to Isaac. Genesis 24, 15, before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. Abraham was looking for a wife for his son Isaac, but he was unwilling for Isaac to marry a Canaanite where Abraham and his family were living at the time. So Abraham sent his servant to his own kinsman to the city of Nahor to find a wife for Isaac. The servant came to a well and prayed that God would give him success in this mission. He prayed that whichever young woman provided water for him and his camels would be God's choice to be Isaac's wife. As the servant was praying, along came a beautiful young virgin named Rebekah, who not only gave the servant a drink, but also watered his camels, providing the sign to Abraham's servant that she was the chosen bride. Genesis 24 verses 10 through 28. Then the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram Naharim and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women went out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they've had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all the camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a baka and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, born to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Everything was settled between Abraham's servant and Rebekah's father and her brother Laban, and the servant took Rebekah back to Isaac. Isaac and Rebekah were married in Genesis 24, 67. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. But for many years, Rebekah could not have children. Isaac prayed for his wife, the Lord answered his prayer, and Rebekah became pregnant. Genesis 25, 21. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. Rebekah became the mother of Jacob and Esau, the first twins mentioned in the Bible. Genesis 24, verses 22 through 24. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One person will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. From these twins came two conflicted nations. During Rebekah's pregnancy, God gave her a prophecy. 
She had noticed that the twins were struggling with each other in her womb, and she asked the Lord why they were struggling. The Lord told her that two nations were in her womb, and those nations would be at odds with one another. Genesis 25 verses 22 and 23. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One person will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. This prophecy came true. Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel, became the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Genesis 32, 28. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Esau became the father of the Edomites, who warred against Israel for ages and were wiped out. Obadiah 1, verses 1 through 21. The vision of Obadiah. This is what the sovereign Lord says about Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nations to say, Rise, let us go against her for battle. See, I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You will live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights. You who say to yourself, Who can bring me down to the ground? Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. If thieves come to you, if robbers in the night, oh, what a disaster awaits you. Would they not steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers came to you, would they not leave a few grapes? But how Esau will be ransacked, his hidden treasures pillaged. All your allies will force you to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. On that day, declares the Lord, will I not destroy the wise men of Edom, those of understanding in the mountains of Esau. Your warriors, Taman, will be terrified, and everyone in Esau's mountains will be cut down in the slaughter. Because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On the day you stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. You should not gloat over your brother on the day of his misfortune nor rejoice over the people of Judah on the day of their destruction, nor boast so much on the day of their trouble. You should not march through the gates of my people on the day of their disaster, nor gloat over them in their calamity on the day of their disaster, nor seize their wealth on the day of their disaster. You should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives, nor hand over their survivors in the day of their trouble. The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you your deeds will return upon your own head. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Jacob will be a fire, and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble, and they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. The Lord has spoken. People from the Negev will occupy the mountains of Esau, and people from the foothills will possess the land of the Philistines. They will occupy the fields of Ephraim and Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead. This company of Israelite exiles who are in Canaan will possess the land as far as Zarephath. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Shepharad will possess the towns of the Negev. Deliverers will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord's. Esau was the firstborn, and he was Isaac's favorite son, but Jacob was Rebekah's favorite. Genesis 25, 28. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Esau was the firstborn and was due the birthright, but Rebekah helped Jacob deceive Isaac so that the blessing would fall to the younger Jacob. Genesis 27, verses 1 through 40. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country and hunt some wild game for me. 
Prepare for me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat, so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats, so I can prepare some tasty food for your father, just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat, so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man, while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat, so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness an abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mothers bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, my father, please sit up and eat some of my game, so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Isaac heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright, and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you, and have made all his relatives his servants and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. When Esau discovered Jacob's deceit, he aimed to kill Jacob. Rebekah came up with a plan to help save Jacob, but it involved deceiving her husband again. Rebekah came up with a reason to send Jacob to her brother Laban to look for a wife for himself. Genesis 27 verses 41 through 46. 
Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. Rebekah's marriage to Isaac was the result of God's providence. Her pregnancy was an answer to prayer, and the lives of her sons fulfilled prophecy. This shows that God can ultimately bring about His will through His mercy and wisdom despite our sin.